if you like to buy goods, if you like to order your next iPhone or your next car, in particular also German cars, you cannot buy them because the electronics is not there. And, and the reason the electronics are there because electronics is starting to proliferate in everything you buy. There's almost nothing you can buy anymore without an internet connection and a chip, which, which is good news for the industry and the semiconductor industry and also good for the future. I think this trend is exploding as we speak and will likely continue to explode the coming years. If you, my biggest uh, recent event is a, a speech uh, given of my Mark Lua from TSOC CEO on the ISSEC uh, last spring or previous spring, that he said for the coming 20 years, I see ways of improving the um, energy efficient performance of chips 3x every two years, 3x. And this is our customer. And we have to provide them for the coming 20 years with solutions helping them doing so. So I'm, I'm very pleased to have that, uh, that long-term roadmap. Um, however, if you are in the industry for so long, I'm doing this now for close to 40 years, we are working with an exponential function of innovation where every time we're cutting the resolution by two and we do productivity by two and and, and as you know, by everything in two, and the pandemic is a good example of that, nothing goes forever uh, on an exponential curve. So we have to get also moving forward, be careful that how big, how, how much complexity can we put in the machine. So manage complexity is probably our biggest challenge for the coming 20 years. Complexity in terms of um, how many different components and subsystems you have, but also in terms of cost, in terms of lead time of your supplies, in terms of capability of your supplies. We see limits on infrastructure where we have to be smarter dealing with that and still uh, fueling our customers with solutions in the coming 20 years, bounded by cost, bounded by manufacturability, bounded by limitations at your suppliers, and, and bounded by uh, serviceability, manufacturability. I think there is similarity between, I see the um, environmental crisis and energy crisis and the stepper business. When I joined ASML, you made a stepper with a single team. And you sit close together because the thing was relatively, it was still complicated, but you could do it with 10 people and you understood each other. Today, business, we have 10,000 people. Now, when you go to the energy transition, it involves even bigger teams. So what people underestimate, they think it's done with a solar cell or a windmill, and it's only one point solution. The key is not how to avoid failure, how, the key is how you manage failure. How quick are you able to detect and have it on the table in the team, we just screw things up, we have to think differently. And how do you learn from the failure and how you get quickly around it? Only then you can make these risky steps. So I believe that system approach when applied in the right way to almost everything we do in society, uh, from stepper making, from car making today, you know, and making the car electrical is only one part of the solution. You still need to have your, your fuel stations and your energy delivery. Uh, so you need to have a system approach. And this will be a challenge moving forward, not just the, only the technology, but bringing it all together as a total system. We talk about today about the internet of uh, things, right? So. If you look to the individual cost of components, it's already low enough that everybody can afford to make a chip in almost everything you buy, including clothes, if you want to. So, and that technology is cheap and good enough to deal with it. So where the future innovation is, is in systems to deal with the data, skill the data centers, uh, skill the, uh, the computational power, both on endpoints uh, like, uh, like, like the things and the, the smartphones, the cars, as well the data centers. And I think we will see, I, I'm not gonna say I know the thing forever. I would claim that Litho will be needed forever. Silicon will likely need forever, but likely we will see things on top of silicon who are going to assist silicon to get even to the next level of power. Quantum computing is an example of, uh, of that, where quantum computing will probably not have the scale as silicon has, but will be working again as a system, as an improved system to get us to the next wave. So I think uh, silicon is a good place to be. 
And I even claim that silicon will be one of the improvements area where we talked about the energy transition, where we will be able to save greenhouse gas emission. I probably should say that I had a very scientific way of getting to this point and I did look to all the options. Uh, the truth is I didn't. Uh, in fact, uh, when I was graduated after a study of electronics and physics, you go to the major company in Holland and then I think in my field, Philips is a very important technology player. So that's why I went to Philips. And then you, you go into, uh, into the businesses of Philips and then I finally get a, my, get a number of job offers. And I think the initial job offers were, phys were around uh, software, which I turned down. And then somebody said, well, we have this new startup calling ASMI and Philips. And, he, and they showed me a pictorial of a stepper. And what excites me at that interview, uh, which made my decision in a split second, uh, that the amount of technology coming together in a single box was mind-boggling. It was not only software and electronics, but also mechanics, mechatronics, optics, a lot of multiple disciplines, which I really get attracted to and which made my key decision. And I couldn't tell, of course, then, then uh, that uh, where the company today is bigger than Philips, where it all started. And people come to my office and ask often, okay, what do I have to do to be successful? And I think you have to, uh, foremost, enjoy what you're doing. And I know for a lot of people say this is not possible. Well, if you think it's not possible, think about it again. It's, you, you have to find ways to enjoy it and then make sure you, 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 you show in your environment you can make a difference and you can contribute. That's, the, that's my biggest thing. Uh, and you have to be able to deal with ambiguity. I, I'm, I'm probably one of the guys who are quite f comfortable by taking the decision we go to right and then I go home and ask myself continuously, should we really go right <laughs> or should we change it again? So the paranoia that you're really gonna, because all these things, like I said, these, these roadmaps are 20 years old. You cannot assume that 20 years ago I had the right feeling about machine to make. This is an adventure over X amount of years.